Fascia is connected to your skin. So when you twist and pull your skin, you're actually pulling on your fascia. The way to work with fascia is to pin, stretch, lock, and then move slowly in counter rotation while you breathe. So what does that look like? Pin an area, stretch it, stretch the skin, lock it in place so it can't move. And move slowly in rotations while you breathe. That's how you unwind fascial restrictions. Take your right hand, grab the top of your left ear. Left hand, grab the bottom of your left ear. We've pinned. I want you to stretch now. So move the bottom hand forward, the top hand backwards. Now walk it in place. Hold it there in a stretched position. Move slowly in counter rotation. And breathe. Notice if you feel a shift. What we're doing is we're pinning, stretching, walking, moving slowly in counter rotation around this area and then all the fascia in the rest of your body has to adapt. And because your fascia holds your muscles, your bones, your tendons, your ligaments, and your organs, when you work on the fascial restriction, you unwind that. So a question we get all the time is, but if I'm stretching my skin, is that not gonna give me wrinkles? Look at our before and after photos. It's actually the opposite. Pulls tight, watch this. Wrinkles. So. It's actually the opposite. What I wanna do is I wanna take that wrinkle and I wanna stretch the fascia over that area. The wrinkle can come from tension, emotions, chemicals, and dehydration. If you are dehydrated, you have layers of fascia like this, an expanded state. There's a lot of space in there. And as you dehydrate the body, you slowly dry it out. All the fluid between both ends starts to get squeezed out and it starts to dry out and it gets to this point. Now when it gets to this point, it gets sticky. And because it gets sticky, it can't slide. They're supposed to glide when we move. They glide across each other in rotation. Now they no longer move. There's no more fluid in there. So all the toxins build up. And because the toxins build up in that area and there's no way to flush them out because there's too much restriction, it leads to disease. The body's not at ease. And if, it, and if it's not at ease for long enough, it's going to be a problem. That's where rashes, rosacea, gas, bloating, distension, depression, autoimmune, scoliosis, MS, all of this comes from sticky layers of the fascia. If you put chemicals in your body, those layers immediately go and they contract. They contract because they're being threatened. If you threaten your body, what happens? Fight or flight, boom. You go to the musculoskeletal system, which is there to protect, fight, and run. We don't wanna trigger that system because as you trigger that system, it has a layer closest to the bone. It pulls all the layers in so that it tightens and it's protected. When I go into a hotel, which we've done, that has a lot of chemicals in their detergent or in their, in their towels and their, their, their bed sheets, instantly, my skin gets dry. Instantly, the moment I walk in the room, my layers of fascia, which are hydrated, go from here all the way to here. Because my body's trying to protect itself, it pulls all the water down to the surface. That water is now being used to clean out and filter out all the chemicals that are coming in. They put fluoride and chlorine in the water, so you're constantly in a deficit. You're constantly showering in that. Your body is contracting and using all of this water to flush everything out. Now you're chronically dehydrated. And if you're chronically dehydrated, those layers get sticky. If they get sticky, then nothing can flow. If nothing can flow, you get a buildup of toxins. If you get a buildup of toxins for long enough, it leads to autoimmune, it leads to all these other issues. It's like if you didn't flush your toilet or clean your room for five years, what is it gonna look like? It's not gonna look very good. And then all of a sudden you get sick. And then when you get sick, you take a medication that suppresses that sickness so that you don't experience the uncomfortable symptoms. That's actually the problem. Your body is getting sick so it can remove those toxins. If you've been holding on to all those toxins and it's starting to get all sticky and gross and yellow and mucusy, you get mucus layers and, and toxins building up in different areas of your body, your body goes, okay, I've had enough. I can't hold on to this anymore. I'm gonna knock you down for a week. I'm gonna knock you down for a month and you're gonna be coughing and you're gonna be sneezing and you're gonna get really hot and you're gonna have diarrhea and you're gonna have a headache and you're gonna feel dehydrated and you're not gonna feel hungry. The reason why is because we're gonna get rid of everything you've been putting in. All those chemicals, all those toxins, all those emotions, all that trauma, gone. Now, why are you not hungry? Because the body heals when, it's not, when you're not eating. If you take in food 
Your body now uses all your energy to process that food, not to heal yourself, not to clean. What are we doing in society today? Hey, uh, body, I know you're getting really hot and you're cooking and frying all of the stuff that no longer belongs inside. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a medication. And that medication is gonna turn the thermometer down, it's gonna turn the heat down so that you stop frying all the things that shouldn't be in there. I'm gonna take something to stop all the mucus and dry it all up. Well, that should be coming out. If you get congested, that means that there's stuff blocked in these layers. It's not a good sign to have mucus, but for it to be coming out is a good sign. You don't want that stuff in your body. Look at it. It's green and it's thick. That's what's in the layers of your fascia. There's chemicals in there. There's trauma in there. You do not want that in your body. So why do we stretch the fascia? Why do we stretch the skin? Because we're opening up those layers. When you open them, things can flow. They can flush. They can move. That's why breathing is so important for the fascial maneuvers. We do breathing to bring as much air in so that it puffs those layers up like a balloon so then everything can flow. We counter rotate and contract to generate pressure to increase the flow through those areas so things start to open up. We use breathing to expand and contract the body, not just to bring oxygen in. Oxygen is life. It does help heal the body, but we're using it to do expand, contract, expand, contract. Every time I go, air comes in, expands internally to external, and then I exhale and it contracts. That pump, it's a pump. The lungs are a pump. They're pumping the body up. And then the heart is a dam. The, the blood all goes to the heart, it dams in there, and then when it's ready, it lets go, and, and then it flows back. The calves are a pump too, they squeeze in your lower body so that they can get to the lung and the heart. That's why walking is also a way to work with fascia. When you walk barefoot in nature for 30 minutes, it will heal the body. Mm -hmm.